Hi, everyone. My name is Alexandru Shomai, and uh, today I'll speak about External Workspace Manager plugin for Jenkins Pipeline. So uh, a few words about myself. Um, I have more than two years experience in software development achieved while working at different companies. Uh, this summer, I've got my master's degree in software engineering, and I mostly enjoy coding in Java Groovy and JavaScript. Uh, so one of the problems that some Jenkins users are facing is that it is quite difficult to share and reuse the same workspace for multiple jobs. So one use case would be when running uh, parallel testing across nodes. Um, as we know, some builds may have large files and copying them across nodes may prove to be slow. Um, also, there are some other possible solutions like stashing or unstashing pre-made artifacts, but this can be used only in a single pipeline job. Uh, copy artifacts plugin as I said, can be slow, or uh, if the user goes for some advanced job settings, in this case, uh, he has to implement the workspace management logic by himself. So the solution that I'm proposing is the external workspace manager plugin. It started as a Google Summer of Code project, and I, has, I had as mentors Oleg and Martin. So the main focus is on pipeline jobs, and it facilitates workspace share and reuse across multiple uh, jobs that are running uh, on different nodes. So the concept is that you would have the build pipeline and multiple nodes, for example, one for building testing stages, and all these nodes are mounted uh, on, on a common disk pool, and this will consist of our common build workspace. Um, but before actually using the plugin, uh, the user needs to set up his infrastructure. So uh, from the Jenkins master, as well as from each node, there has to be set mounting points to the disks. And these mounting point paths will be defined in the, in the plugin's configuration. So now we are looking at a plugin configuration, uh, for, at this plugin's configuration. Um, so what we have to do is, so we need uh, this is one disk pool defined, so we need to define it uh, to give it an ID, a display name, and a description. Uh, these are optional, the display name and the description. And then here are like three more parameters uh, that are used for some advanced features. They have help files, so uh, you, can, you can see how to use them. And then um, in this disk pool, I have defined two disk entries, each of them having a disk ID, a display name, uh, a master mount point. This is the mounting point from the Jenkins master to the node, uh, to the disk. And um, physical path on disk, this is an optional parameter used for workspace path computation on the disk. Uh, it has a help file that shows you how, how the workspace path gets computed on the disk. And optionally, we can provide some disk information for some advanced fe features. Uh, now let's have a look at the node configs. So on the left, we have um, is this working? Oh, yeah. uh, so on the left, we have a node one config is labeled Linux. And um, in the external workspace node properties, we need to reference the disk pool ID to the Jenkins global config. And we need to reference the disk IDs. And for each disk entry, we need to specify the node mount point. So this is the mounting point from the node to the disk. Um, Next, we have a second node config. This time can be labeled test. And again, we need to define um, same properties, but um, in, in this example, I have uh, a bit different uh, mounting point from, from the node to the disk. Uh, now let's have a look at the pipeline example. So what I'm doing in this example, I'm reusing the same workspace in the same pipeline on two different nodes. So firstly, I'm just cloning the project and building it, but I'm skipping the tests. And then um, secondly, I'm, I'm just running the tests in the same workspace as before. So what I'm doing firstly, I'm calling the XWS allocate uh, step uh, by providing a disk pool ID parameter. So this step will allocate a disk from the disk pool and on that disk will allocate um, a workspace. And then with the object return, I will pass it as input parameter to the XWS uh, step within the node label Linux. So this step will, will now to, um, to compute my complete workspace starting from the node to the actual disk. Um, so as I said, I'm, I'm cloning the project, building it, and then uh, on, on another node label test, I'll be able to, to test it. 
Uh, and the second example that I'm showing is how to reuse the same workspace on two different jobs. So firstly, in the upstream, you just have to allocate the workspace. Uh, you build it and trigger the downstream job. In the downstream job, you select the triggering build by making use of the run selector plugin. Um, then you can allocate from the upstream and run the testing. Um, so this is the upstream job pipeline. So there are no changes in the external workspace commands. Uh, what I'm doing just at the end of the, of the job, of, of the pipeline script, I'm just triggering the downstream job and I'm passing in as parameter the build number parameter which takes as value the, the current number of, uh, of this build. And then in the downstream job, as I said, I'm gonna use the run selector plugin. So I'll choose the select run step and provide, um, in this example, I'm using as selector the build number selector. So this one um, selects me the build from the upstream job uh, with the number specified as parameter. Uh, as you have seen before, uh, this build number parameter value was passed from the upstream. Uh, so with the run wrapper uh, object returned by the select run, I'll pass it as parameter to to the XWS allocate step um, for, for the selected run. Uh, so in this case, it will know to allocate me the same workspace as used uh, by the upstream job. And then I can, I can perform testing uh, on a different node, uh, but uh, in the same workspace that was used by the upstream job. Uh, I'm gonna show you a, a quick demo now. Uh, okay. So um, I have this first example. The, the pipeline script is the same as on the slide, so no need to go through it again. I'm just build it. So if we have a look in the console output, we get some useful messages saying that the selected disk ID is disk one from, from disk, is this big enough? Uh, and the path on the disk. So the path on the disk follows the pattern, like physical path on disk parameter. It follows the, the name of the job, and then um, it has the, the current build number. And then we get messages saying running in, and this is the, the mounting point from the node to the disk, and followed by the path on the disk. And similarly, when we run the testing, uh, we get, again, the same messages. Okay, so the build has succeeded. And um, on the left, we have the external workspaces view. So if I'm gonna click on it, uh, I, I also have some relevant information here, but actually from here, I can browse my workspace uh, and just look at what I have here. Um, okay, so this was the first example. And the second one, the one with uh, reusing the same workspace on two different jobs. So um, in the upstream, um, so. The pipeline script is, is as on the slides, so I'm just gonna trigger the, the upstream job. Triggering it now. Uh, let's have a look in the console output. So again, messages. Um, and then uh, at the end, it triggers the downstream job. Uh, if we go to the downstream now, um, in the console output of the downstream job, uh, it selected the build number from the upstream and then allocates workspace and the build succeeds. And uh, now um, if we go to the external workspaces view, we also have uh, this fingerprint. So actually I can see that uh, this workspace was used uh, on two different jobs and it also shows me on which uh, builds have been used on those jobs. And again, I can browse the workspace because it's the same workspace for, for both of the jobs, so I, I, can, I can just browse it here. Um, okay, so this was my, my short demo. Um, also, the plugin has even more features. The advanced features, like uh, you can uh, clean the workspace after it was used. Also, um, as I said, by default, the workspace path is computed uh, based on that formula, but you can override it, uh, either in the Jenkins global config or in the pipeline script. Uh, and it also has even more features, like uh, you can restrict a specific disk pool to be allocated only for specific jobs, 
or you have flexible disk allocation strategies. But uh, all these demos I'm gonna show you tomorrow um, at the Jenkins Open Source Hub, uh, Thursday at 12.45. Uh, and afterwards, I'll be around for discussions and questions. Uh, so this plugin has been released, and uh, it's, up, it's available in the main update center. And on the plugins readme page, there are some, um, some examples. Uh, so it has uh, basic usage guidelines and um, explanations of how to use it, and all the features available. Um, uh, are explained here and how to use them. So you, you can just check it. Um, yeah, so um, any feedback about this plugin is welcome. Um, yeah, here should be. <laughs> so it's welcome on, on the Jira or on Gitter chat. Uh, so some links. Um, the plugin is open source, so it, it's, it's on GitHub. And uh, this is the link to the Gitter chat uh, where you can ask questions and join the discussions afterwards. Um, so this was my, my talk. Um, thank you. Uh, if we have questions. <laughs>